This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. The face is familiar, but... From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics on iTunes, or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. There are many roles on TV and the movie. There's the lead roles that get all the attention and the big bucks. But you can make a really nice career out of being a character actor, someone who might appear mostly in the background or in a scene or two. Character actors can sometimes steal a major moment from right under the lead. You may not know their names, but you probably recognize their faces. Oh, that guy. You've probably never heard, for instance, of Irving Bacon, but he has no less than 543 acting roles listed on IMDb, including Gone with the Wind, Meet John Doe, Spellbound, and A Star is Born. I've seen that guy somewhere. (laughs) His career spanned from 1915 to 1965. Many of his roles are literally listed as uncredited, because they didn't used to list everyone in the credits of older movies. Right. I mean, you had the main cast and then everybody else who... Yeah. yeah. And he did a lot of silent short films. So Bacon was the go-to guy if you needed someone to be bewildered or frustrated. (laughs) He moved from movies to TV as that developed, and he had many guest TV roles with his final performance on The Dick Van Dyke Show. Do you know Edward Peel Sr.? He has 430 IMDb credits. A lot of westerns. He actually started as a leading man in the silent era, but quickly moved to character parts. His career ran from 1930 to 1951, so he missed out on TV. His son, Edward Jr., was a child actor and had the lead in a series of silent comedies playing Edgar. Here's someone you, I'm sure you'll recognize if you ever watch classic TV or film, Charles Lane. He was a founding member of the Screen Actors Guild. His career spanned from 1930 to 2006, with his last role, which was voice work, when he was 101 years old. If you needed a crabby or scowling authority figure, he was your guy. He was a member of Frank Capra's acting company with roles in It's a Wonderful Life, he played the rent collector, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, and Arsenic and Old Lace. Between 1940 and 1942, he had 67 film roles. Other films included Mighty Joe Young and It's a Mad, 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 Mad World. He racked up a total of 365 film and TV credits. Lane often collaborated with Lucille Ball on her various TV series. He played the villainous Homer Bedlow on Petticoat Junction, who was constantly scheming to shut down the beloved Cannonball Train. Lane also had regular or recurring TV roles on Dear Phoebe, Dennis the Menace, The Real McCoys, The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis, The Phyllis Diller Show, Bewitched, Karen, and Soap. In 2005, his 100th birthday was celebrated at the TV Land Awards. From a wheelchair, he said, if you're interested, I'm still available for work. And obviously he got a job after that. Yeah, (laughs) and he passed away at age 102. Alicia Cook Jr. had 217 IMDb credits from 1930 to 1988. Known for playing neurotic characters with film roles in Love Crazy, The Big Sleep, The Maltese Falcon, Shane, Rosemary's Baby, and TV shows Gunsmoke, but who wasn't? That was it's like the, the law and order of its day. Yeah. Batman, Mannix, Beretta, and Magnum P.I., as well as a role as Captain Kirk's attorney on Star Trek. John Daner would often play erudite villains and bosses. He started as an animator for Disney and a disc jockey before going in front of the camera. He then racked up 287 IMDb credits from 1941 to 1989 with films The Day of the Dolphin, The Boys from Brazil, and Scaramouche, and TV shows The Alaskans, The Doris Day Show, The Roaring Twenties, 77 Sunset Strip, The Baileys of Balboa, and Bear Essence, and a lot, I mean a lot, of TV westerns. John McGiver didn't get into showbiz until his 30s. He was an English teacher, which explained why he often played that type of role. 
but he racked up 111 credits in 20 years with films Love in the Afternoon, The Manchurian Candidate, Breakfast at Tiffany's, Midnight Cowboy, and TV shows McKeever and the Colonel, The Patty Duke Show, Many Happy Returns, Mr. Terrific, and The Jimmy Stewart Show, among others. His son Boris is on Netflix's House of Cards. Wit Bissell would often play scientists and doctors. His father was actually a doctor. Just some of his 314 IMDb credits from 1940 to 1984 included sci-fi films, Creature from the Black Lagoon, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, and The Time Machine, as well as films The Magnificent Seven and HUD. In terms of TV, he was all over anthology series, as well as Bachelor Father, The Rifleman, Wagon Train, Peyton Place, and Perry Mason, and was a regular on the Time Tunnel. His son Brian played the second Chris on The Partridge Family. Edward Andrews played a number of officious characters with his horn-rimmed glasses and slicked back hair. 182 IMDb credits from 18, 1936 to 1984, including films Elmer Gantry, The Absent-Minded Professor with the late Jerry Lewis, Tora, 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 16 Candles, Million Dollar Duck, Gremlins, and he had regular TV roles on Broadside and The Lamentable Super Train. He was the conductor. Ooh. <laughs> Harold J. Stone often played bad guys and mobsters in his 171 IMDb credits from 1949 to 1986, including films Somebody Up There Likes Me, The Wrong Man, and Spartacus, and TV shows Grand Jury, The Untouchables, Gunsmoke, The Virginian, My World and Welcome to It, Bridget Loves Bernie, and Barney Miller. Oh, I haven't thought about My World and Welcome to It for quite some time, but mm -hmm. I used to like that mm -hmm. show. If you're looking for character actors who played foreigners, consider Vito Scotti, who often played swarthy comedic roles on film and TV. He also appeared in The Godfather and Get Shorty, but was best known for wacky TV roles on The Addams Family, Gilligan's Island, The Flying Nun, and Hogan's Heroes. He played Mexicans, Russians, Japanese, Indians, as well as Italian roles in his 229 IMDb credits. He was also an amateur chef. Or maybe Bernard Fox, if you're looking for a blowhard Englishman. A fifth-generation actor whose first film role was at 18 months. He appeared in both the 1958 and 1997 depictions of the Titanic. In between, he appeared in films One of Our Spies is Missing, Million Dollar Duck, The Rescuers, a voice role, Herbie Goes to Monte Carlo, and the 1999 Mummy film. But most of his roles were on TV. Hogan's Heroes as Colonel Crittenden, The Andy Griffith Show as Malcolm Merriweather, and his best-known role, Dr. Bombay on Bewitched. He just passed away last year after 113 IMDb credits. A more modern character actor can be found in Stephen Toblowski, playing doctors, teachers, and other professional types. 225 IMDb credits from 1977 onward include Thelma and Louise, Groundhog Day, and Memento, and TV shows Blue Skies, Murder One, CSI Miami, Deadwood, Heroes, Glee, Californication, and Silicon Valley. He's also a podcaster. How's that for modern? Hmm. <laughs> There's lots more character actors today. Absolutely. If you see somebody in a not main role in more than, you know, two or three shows, you know he's a character actor. And he's probably making a pretty good living. Mm -hmm. Not as good as, you know... Some people, but yeah. at least he's working. Right. As are we. On our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics on iTunes, or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Indy. And I'm Mark. Thanks for watching. <laughs>